Hey now, welcome to another edition of the Inside BS Show. Today, we're talking about how you can create a fantastic brand for yourself and how you can deliver wisdom to the ideal audience for you. My guest today on the show is Susan Sharp. She's an author, a speaker, and a consultant, and she's gonna share with us the way she's created her personal brand. She has made herself into an expert, and she's gonna share how she did it. So those of you who are out there who are in professional services, or maybe you're a professional speaker, and you wanna learn how to become a brand, how to stake out a position in a market niche, this is the exact person to help us with that. Please join me in welcoming Susan to the Inside BS Show. Susan, thanks for joining us today. It's great to have you here. Thanks so much for the invite. All right. So give us your give us your background. Tell us how you got started. Bring us up to date and tell us where you are now with your with your with your career. Sure. Well, I spent many years, 20, 20, over 20, uh, teaching in higher education as a theater and public speaking professor. And I got really burnt out. And so burnt out, I say I was crispy as chicken. And uh, so I waited too long to really be able to have clarity in what my next move was. And so I was sort of forced into this crap, I have to do something different and I have to do it now, but I'm not sure what to do. So I made a lot of mistakes in the process of pivoting. And I finally got clarity on what I wanted to do. I wanted to write more books. I wanted to speak more. And then COVID happened. And every podcast, well, not podcast, at least I was on podcast still, but every speaking engagement, every book signing, every event that I eked out to sort of replace my income suddenly was gone. And I had to pivot yet again. And I did not, I still was so tired that I did not have... I didn't know what to do. This was like we were all like zooming for the first time. And, and so I think what I have come to, how I've come to think about this time in my life is it was the great experiment. And I threw everything I knew at the wall to see what would stick. And some things did and some things didn't work at all. And I eked through my savings pretty quickly. And but but the the point is that I'm still here. I'm still breathing. And you find ways that work, and you find a way. And if you really care about what you do, if you really care about your message, you find the way. And so that's what I eventually did. But I really learned so much about burnout and what not to do about burnout that it's sort of accidentally become my my platform. And so I had written a book just prior to COVID called Midlife Wisdom, in which I was talking about, you know, moving into the best part of your life. And I, there was a little bit of a disconnect because I sort of felt like a train wreck. I felt like I was like going through imposter syndrome because everything that I was saying wasn't working in this new, in this new COVID era. So it just was a matter of just throwing things away that weren't working and adopting new things and reading a lot and talking. Uh, I think what we found during COVID was we all had to to pivot in some way and we really relied on each other. So that's sort of what came out of this me leaving my 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 professor gig to do something different because I was burnt out. Okay, great. So there are people listening right now who are thinking to themselves, well, that, that's exactly the way I feel. Mm -hmm. So Susan, what did you do to overcome that feeling and to, to re reignite your passion? Well, I, I, tr I tried to identify what was it that was about my professor gig that was like ad nauseum for me. Like I couldn't do I couldn't direct one more play. I couldn't teach one more class on whatever. And when I found out what I didn't want, it's much easier to, to gravitate towards what you do want. So I think for me, resting was key. I really needed to mentally rest. And I needed to give myself the grace to just say, I don't have it figured out. And I'm in six months, I'm still not probably going to have it figured out. But I'm still able to function right now. So I'm going to do what I can. And of course, I would make different decisions now. But in the moment, that's all I knew. 
and I didn't have some guru guiding the way. Uh, you, you know, you've talked on your show in the past about the importance of mentoring and having someone to, to mentor you. And had I gone back, I would have done that. I would have sought out help much earlier for that. But, but what I learned about myself was that just to stop judging ourselves and just be you you can't you can't judge you can't keep judging yourself and having all those voices in your head uh, criticizing yourself when you're trying to do something new. And let's face it, any time we try to step out and do something new, it is scary, and we are going to make mistakes. So we don't need you know the rest of the world is going to be critical of us. We don't need to be that for ourselves. We should be our best cheerleader. Oh man, that is that is a message that people need to write down right there. Everybody else is going to provide you with the negativity. You got to be positive for yourself. I love yeah. that. So Susan, tell us what your what your focus is now. So today, who's the who's the person that comes to you that can help you and where do you do your best work? That that you can help and where do you do your best work? Yeah. Well, a, a lot of people come to me because they're just stuck and they know that I got over this. They know that I got to the other side so they look to me to sort of get unstuck and 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 so People that come to me, they want to know how to how to get over the burnout and how to be better. And and I always say that you know it's just uh, you have gifts that I don't. I have gifts that you probably don't. So it's just our job in life to point each other in the right direction when we see things in people's lives that that aren't working for them. And I would want someone to do that for me. So that's what I try to do. Honest conversation about what I'm seeing, what I'm experiencing, what's resonating with me having gone through it. Um, I, I wrote this book, Midlife Wisdom, largely to help people process what's going on in midlife. I don't think most people go through a crisis. I think we go, sort of go through an awakening. Like we, like, you know, for some of us that like women in particular, we remember the girl in third grade who pulled our hair and we're still holding this unforgiveness, right? It's like, get over it. Uh, and so I think when we get to midlife, we need something, we need to grasp onto something different for what I consider the, the best half of our life. We go into midlife with a lot of wisdom, maybe some disposable income, uh, certainly a whole laundry list of things that, that we, we shouldn't do. So people that come to me are really looking for my honest feedback. Some people are coming to me for skills like public speaking and, and uh, encouragement. Um, but uh, lots of different people make their way to me. I'm never sure quite where they come from, but um, they, they want to help get unstuck. And that's what I can do for them. That's perfect. I love that. All right. So Susan, I'm going to ask you this question. I want you to take a minute and think about the answer. And the question is, what, what is, what are the two or three things that you want people to be ready to share with you? What do you want to know about them so that you can determine, you know, you can use those fresh eyes that you bring and determine you know, what's going to help them get unstuck. So think about maybe the first two or three questions that people can start asking themselves and hopefully then reach out to you and you will ask them and they can have the answers ready. But give us the first two or three questions that you would ask someone who comes to you who's stuck so that they can begin the process of figuring out, hey, what am I going to do to get unstuck? So think about that for just one minute. And while you're thinking about that, I'm going to remind folks that we're brought to you by Sandrowski Corporate Advisors. So for over 35 years, Sandrowski has helped privately held businesses and families of affluence, and they've helped them with tax planning, with uh, advisory on setting up a family office, with dispute advisory, business valuations, litigation support, forensic accounting. They do the same things that a big four accounting firm would do except that they do it for this mid-market area. So if you own a privately held business and someday you want to sell it, you want an exit strategy, you need to call Sandrowski. Why? Because they have a specialty. They have an area of expertise where they can help you save the capital gains tax, a lot of money that you would pay in capital gains tax when you sell your business. Great example is I was talking to Harry Sandrowski a couple of weeks ago when I was with him, and he said to me, Dave, I had a client 
who was selling his business. It was a manufacturing business and he was going to sell it for $49 million. We were able to save him $10 million in capital gains taxes because we reorganized his business in such a way that he qualified for a small business stock exemption. Now, not every business qualifies, but in order to qualify, you need to look at the criteria and Sandrowski are experts at doing this. They can also help you structure your business so that you do qualify. If you're interested in something like this or you just wanna save money on your taxes, give Sandrowski a call today. You can call them by reaching out at 866-717-1607, 866-717-1607. Sandrowski Corporate Advisors, there's a CPA, they're a CPA firm with a different perspective. It's so funny, every time I look at the phone number, I wanna say you can dial 866-717-1607, but nobody knows what that means because we don't have phones with dials on them anymore. <laughs> We're also brought to you by My Revenue Roadmap Guide. That's right. The guide that I use to coach my clients on business development, I wanna give it to you for free. Here's what you need to do. Go to revenueroadmapguide.com, all those words together, revenueroadmapguide.com, enter your contact info there. You can immediately download your guide to business development. You can customize it for your professional practice. It'll help you grow your business. It's my gift to you for watching and for listening to the show. We're speaking with Susan Sharp. You can reach out to Susan at the phone number 309. 868-2253, 309-868-2253. I'm also gonna put her email address down in the show notes. All right, Susan, so before we went on that quick little break, I asked you a question. What are some of the questions that you would ask someone who's stuck and they come to you so that you can help them diagnose the reasons why they're stuck? And what are those questions that you would ask them? What do you want? And what are the obstacles to getting that? And once, once we get the answers to those, then it becomes how to make the new roadmap. But we have to know what we want. And I think in a world where we have infinite choices, I mean, when you and I were in elementary school, well, you know, we, we had some career choices, but they weren't nearly what we have today, right? So, did, you know, podcast host was not quite in your elementary curriculum, was it? Right? Uh, <laughs> So we have so many choices today, and we have so many choices right from the luxury of our own homes, frankly. So what, what do you want, what, and what's the obstacle? Not the perceived obstacles, but what are the actual obstacles? And I always hear money. Frankly, if you want something bad enough, the money will come. So I, don't, I just want to get that right out of the way. Uh, don't ever say money's the issue, because the money will come. Uh, just trust me if you're clear on what you want the money comes so um and then after we find out the questions to those two things we can start to make a road map and and i think if somebody hasn't currently left their job there are things to do to sort of ride that out a little bit longer so you have that income and you can maximize those benefits. I think most of us, uh, it, when we were working in a, in a job where somebody else provided the health insurance and the benefits, we, we, we don't maximize those, and we really should. There's often free mental health counseling. There's, there's often a lot of different things you could do prior to just saying, I'm done. So we need to maximize those before we leave. But um, so, so that's, that's what I would tell people to, to try to get unstuck. And then, of course, to surround yourself with, with encouraging people and uh, lots of different reading and, and whatnot to help you sort of start to retool where, where you want to be. That's great. All right, Susan, I want to, I want to shift gears a little bit and I want to ask you, um, about, about writing books, right? How has, how has writing books helped you grow your business and describe for us the process that you went through to write? Let's take your, let's take your latest book, Midlife Wisdom, the process you went through to write your latest book. Start with how has, how has writing a book, how, writing books, several books, helped you grow your professional business, your professional practice? Yeah, I sort of wrote the book that I needed to read because there wasn't, I wasn't finding that book on the shelf that I needed, sort of like recovering from your past, re embracing your future. It just wasn't out there in the form. So I sort of created this unique journal essay format in one, and I just have never seen anything else like it out there. But that ended up becoming really really, because it's 60% journal, it, it be ended up becoming sort of a conversation between 
the the book and myself and I actually think what it brought was quite a, a lot of healing and clarity and so I think the same thing happens for people that pick it, pick it up it's it, it like it's a conversation between them and themselves really and so again I didn't set out to be an expert in midlife but here I am and it, it seems to be the thing that why I get why I get so many invitations for different things um, and because I think I'm reson, you know, my message is resonating with people that midlife doesn't have to be put your head in the sand, life is over. I actually think it's the best time of our life. So that um, I think, you know, use what the good Lord gave you. And so here, here I have this message of just my utter burnout. If more people would just use what life has given them as their platform, people wouldn't be striving so much, right? So just tell your story. Everybody has a story that the world needs to hear. So uh, that's, that's really what it became. It became, it ended up becoming a brand because I had, I had spectacularly lived it, right? I had all of the, the failures and joys that go along with it. And so it ended up sort of becoming part of my brand. That's great. Tell us about uh, being on the set of Orange is the New Black. What was, what was that experience like and how did that happen for you? Yeah, I, I would say it's a little bit of good timing, a little bit of dumb luck and a little bit of strategy. <laughs> um, I had just done a marketing campaign for my Etsy shops and I, uh, that's where they bought the art that appeared on the set. And so the timing with the marketing campaign, I, I just don't think can be overlooked. But uh, why they bought from my shop, I'll, I'll probably never know. I, I asked as many questions as I could without being a pest. But um, it seemed like it just the, the, the art that they bought to put on the set seemed to fit the decor. And it was sort of fun uh, watching the show to sort of see my stuff on the set. But... Um, so I, I definitely think the marketing campaign had something to do with it, but I also think it was probably just my, my SEO and my tags that I was doing at the time. And it's given me a lot of leverage that has gotten me a few art shows. It's certainly, it's fun to see famous people standing in front of your art, but, um, it, it was, it, the timing was really good for me. So you created the artwork and they mm -hmm. were out surfing for a particular type of artwork and yeah. they, did they go to Etsy or did they see the art in the Google images and were like, they clicked on it and it took them to your Etsy shop? They went to Etsy specifically? Yeah, it looks, it, I actually had a brief conversation with the set designer and he said that he just loved Etsy. So he was spending, he was trolling time on Etsy that day and wandered, but he bought from both my Etsy shops. So, hmm. you know, that was, that was really nice. He crossed over and you know, there your marketing works with your backlinks and whatnot. So that was sort of fun to see that that he had bought from both shops. And um, and uh, I was only able to find, you know, two, two of the four pieces they bought for the show in the footage. So the rest must have gotten scrapped. But uh, it was still fun. Yeah, but you never know that that set designer could show up on another show somewhere and may need another piece. And he's exactly. bookmarked your site now. So yeah. you're in with them. That's great. Yeah. Talk to me about uh, the that actual um, that as a business. Then now you also, I think I saw on your on your site. Don't you teach people how to how to make Etsy work for them as well? Yeah, I have. I have again spent a lot of time tweaking my shops and trying to get more traction and sales. And so I, I rank currently like in the top six percent of Etsy sellers um, nation or worldwide. So I've had I've had some success, and so I help people try to get out of the you know zero percent sales up to you know get their sales up, and a, a lot of it is just under trying to understand the algorithm that Etsy uses until they change it again, and uh, trying to find out you know what what's working for other people, and a lot of times it's just it's just simple things like switching your photography up bad photos don't sell good art you know so <laughs> you have to you have to have good photos and and understand uh what how how people are searching so sometimes now, it's just simple things yeah so now the your your artwork what you were doing that were you doing that when you were a professor as well and it was like a side hustle for you yeah, I have never ever done one thing. In fact, I, I I would say that my research into creativity shows that, you know, the things that I love to do actually all 
uh, inform each other. They all feed off of each other and encourage the other. And so I think there's a there's many of us out there that would consider themselves highly creative. And, and I don't know any highly creative person that just does one thing. It's almost like your brain can't just focus on one thing. So at the same time I was, you know, building sets and teaching theater, I was working with in interesting materials and I started to ask, well, what could we do with these materials? So one of the the signature pieces that I make is actually a, a piece of a old billboard that I got from a billboard company and I I painted an abstract painting on it and cut it up into pieces and started to wo weave it together. And that's actually the kind of art that was on the set of Orange is the New Black. It was a woven piece from an old billboard. Oh, wow. But, you know, so my theater training informed my art and, you know, even though I'm self-taught, the materials that we use, you, you start to think about them in new ways. So give give some of the creative folks out there some advice now, right? So there there are people out there who are artists, whether they're musicians or they paint on, on a canvas or they, they're sculptors or they're performers, they're actors. Give creative people advice about business development, about marketing. What, what would you tell those folks about the importance of business development, about the importance of marketing? Yeah, I think most creatives only want to do the creative part. And that's great if you can afford to hire out the rest, but most of us can't. So you have to spend time on the stuff that you don't like. You have to spend time on marketing. You have to understand SEO. You have to understand uh, the algorithms. And that's stuff we don't like. That's not, that's not in our wheelhouse because that's not creative and pretty and experimenting. But that's probably more of your job as a creative than, than actually creating. So uh, when digital stuff started to become really popular, I learned how to manipulate my artwork digitally that gives me an infinite product line, right? But I needed to spend that time learning what I didn't consider to be very glamorous or creative stuff. And now it's, you know, at least half my sales are digital products based off of my hard work of being in the studio and painting. But uh, yeah, I would say actually it's probably 60, 40, not so fun stuff to fun stuff. And most artists don't want to hear that. Most creatives don't want to hear that. They want, they want more time for the fun stuff. And that's fine. Then be really good at that and then hire everybody to do the boring stuff for you. But there's your motivation to get more sales to, and to get better at your art so that it will, it will allow you to, to hire out the stuff you don't like. Okay, so if you want to see some of uh, some of Susan's work, you want to see all the things that she can potentially help you with, you can go to her website, asharpdifference.com, all those words together. There's a link to that down in the show notes. All right, Susan, so here's what we're going to do now. I'm going to ask you to give us three things we should take away from our time together, three things you want everyone to remember. While you're doing that, I'm going to remind folks once again that we're brought to you by Sandrowski Corporate Advisors. So you heard me talk about privately held businesses and how Sandrowski can help privately held businesses now i'm talking to you lawyers who are out there who have a case where there is a financial valuation and you need an expert to do the valuation for you how do you select that expert i'm going to give you two criteria first they have to be outstanding at what they do and they have to be very highly regarded they have to be experts in their field so you want people who've done valuations for years and years and years and are highly regarded sandrowski checks that box the second thing is something you may not have thought of. The person doing the valuations, the person who's going to review the financial information for you, either in front of a court, in front of a judge, or just really bring you up to speed, they need to be able to explain the financial information in a way that makes non-financial people comfortable, in a way that's easy for non-financial people to understand. Think about the judge or perhaps a jury or even you and your team. You want the CPA who's done your valuation to be able to break it down very simply for you. Well, Sandrowski can do that. The folks who head up their valuation division, they're college professors, so they have experience sharing complex subjects, breaking them down, making them really easy to understand. So if you need help with a business valuation, you need help with litigation support, you have to give Sandrowski a call. Reach out to them today, 866-717-1607. 
866-717-1607. Sandrowski Corporate Advisors, they're a CPA firm with a different perspective. We're also brought to you by My Revenue Roadmap Guide. You heard me say it before. Why haven't you downloaded your free guide yet? Go to revenueroadmapguide.com, enter your contact info, download the same business development plan I use with my clients. It's my gift to you for joining us today. Revenueroadmapguide.com, enter your contact info, download it now. We're speaking with Susan Sharp. She's an author, a speaker, and a consultant. So if you want Susan to help you get unstuck, or you're an artist and you need someone to put you on the right track, from a business development, from a marketing perspective, or you just want some inspiration, give Susan a call. You can reach out to her at 309-868-2253. That's 309-868-2253. You can visit her website, asharpdifference.com. All that info, as well as Susan's email address is down in the show notes, so you can reach out to her. Okay, Susan, what are the three things you want us to take away from our time together today? Midlife is your best life. You know a lot, uh, and so you need to leverage it. I think creativity, number two, creativity is not optional if you're in business. So even if you don't think of yourself as creative, you need to get creative with how you are doing business because it's not business as usual anymore. The third thing I would have you take away is that we each have a story to tell. And so instead of spinning your wheels and trying to figure out how you can compete, just start figuring out how to tell your story the best because people want genuine connections. People want somebody that has have lived a life and can speak from their own experience. So to learn how to craft and tell your story, which is part of writing. And I think writing is such an important part of business these days. So learn how to tell your story. That's fantastic, Susan. And we enjoyed hearing your story. We enjoyed hearing how you could help us. Thank you so much for being with us on the Inside BS show today. Thank you so much. Alrighty, folks, if you want to reach out to Susan Sharp, again, her phone number is 309-868-2253, 309-868-2253. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Dave Lorenzo. We'll be back here again with another Inside BS show tomorrow. Until then, here's hoping you make a great living and live a great life.